Hello, in this example, we want to determine whether the set is linearly independent or dependent. And in this example, we have three functions. Recall that these functions are vectors coming out of the vector space of real valued functions. So let's say f, curly f, is a vector space of real valued functions. And in another video, we proved that that was indeed a vector space. And we said that the vectors or the elements in that vector space were functions, real valued functions. Okay, so we want to see if this set is linearly independent or dependent. So let's use our definition of linearly dependent and independent. And what that amounts to doing is we want to check if there are some c sub i's, so let's say c1 times our first vector, plus c2 times our second vector, plus c3 times our third vector, x squared minus x plus 2, we want to see if that equals 0, the 0 vector. And keep in mind, since we're in the space of real valued function, the 0 vector really means the 0 function. So let's write that out. This is the 0 function. right? So the 0 vector, it's the function f of x that maps all inputs to an output of 0. It's a 0 function. All right, well, this amounts to checking what sorts of values for c sub i would satisfy this equation. So to investigate that, let's distribute. And when we do that, we get c1 times x plus 1c1 plus c2 times x minus c2 we get a c3 times x squared minus c3x plus 2 times c3 equals 0. Okay, And again, we, you know, we have to compare apples to apples. So if we have an x squared term on the left-hand side, that must equal the x squared term on the right-hand side. So let's consider terms with x squared. Let's consider our quadratic terms. And on the left-hand side, we have a c3x squared. And on the right-hand side, essentially, we have a 0x squared. So this tells us that c3 must equal 0. Okay, let's see what else we can determine here. Well, something else that's really useful, if we look at the linear terms, we look at the terms with just a, an x in them. So consider terms with x. In this case, on the left-hand side, we have a c1x plus a c2x minus c3x equals 0x. You know, and, and after we do a couple of these, we don't have to write down our x's anymore. It's really just a matter of looking at the coefficients because this equation is going to have to hold for any x, so it's certainly true that these coefficients are going to need to satisfy that equation. Now, we already know that c3 is 0, so now we're down to the point that c1 equals negative c2. Lastly, let's look at our constants. So for the constants, we have a c1 minus c2 plus 2c3, and we already said that that's 0. And this implies that c1 equals c2. And putting these last two pieces together, so since c1 equals negative c2, and it must be true that c1 equals c2, uh, this implies that c1 must be 0, 
and C2 must be zero. And so at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're back looking at this equation. Is this set linearly independent or dependent? And we did the analysis. We found out that if this equation is going to hold, it must be the case that C1, C2, and C3 are all zero. So that's what we found. So let's write down our conclusion. So since C1, C2, C3 must all be zero, this shows that the set given by x plus 1, x minus 1, x squared minus x plus 2 is linearly independent. And you might be wondering why you would ever care about that sort of thing. And in the next video, when we talk about basis and basis functions, um, you might make a nice connection here that sometimes it's nice to write quadratic polynomials or maybe any polynomial, any continuous functions, you might want to resolve it somehow in, in, into some sort of nice basis or nice set of basis functions.